We were promised quarterback drama this NFL offseason, and so far it has not disappointed. First, you had the Matthew Stafford, Jared Goff trade. Then Carson Wentz goes to the Colts. So who's next? Deshaun Watson, Sam Darnold, Jimmy G. Steelers going to part ways with Big Ben. You have a quarterback-heavy draft. You have mock drafts where you could have upwards of four quarterbacks taken in the first 15 picks. You might have four taken in the top 10. We'll see how accurate those mocks are in late April, but there is no doubt that teams are rethinking the position. I saw this incredible stat by Field Yates of the Mothership. Of the 22 quarterbacks drafted in the first rounds between 2009 and 2016, 2009 and 2016, zero remain with the team that drafted them. The moral of the story, impatience rules the day, according to Peter King, who will join us coming up. It's amazing. When Carson Wentz got dealt to the Colts, that ended that streak, 2009 to 2016. But it's about the second contract. And that's where you got to be really cautious. You look at Wentz and you look at Goff. These are the number one and number two picks in 2016. They got those second contracts and now they're gone. And the NFL trade talk is just that. It's talk, but a lot of it is, and we try to create this clickbait. It's a huge demand for football and all these sports shows, but not this offseason. It's real. And these teams are more aggressive than they've ever been. You start to look at where Deshaun Watson could end up. Would it be the Jets? Would it be Carolina? Is there somebody else in the mix? Next couple of months are going to be very interesting as the quarterbacking carousel continues to turn faster than ever before. Let me go back to uh, Carson Wentz being traded. And uh, when I got a report on the same day I told you about what the... In fact, my source was the same person who told me the Broncos were willing to give up Drew Locke and their first-round pick for Matthew Stafford... And that's during a commercial break on the show. My source texted me and he said, hey, I got a little information on the Broncos if you're interested. And then I called him during the commercial and I said, got anything on Carson Wentz? He said, they're not getting any any, uh, calls. And uh, said, you know, the Eagles are trying to create a market because there is no market for Carson Wentz. There were no offers. There was an original offer uh, from the Colts and the Colts weren't budging. Now, This is after Matthew Stafford has been traded, and I was told, you know, the Eagles and and one NFL uh, exec said it was laughable what they wanted. They wanted a Matthew Stafford haul for Carson Wentz. And as he pointed out to me, if he's so damn valuable, why don't you keep him? And that's why there was no market for Carson Wentz. And look, at no point did I say Carson Wentz was not going to be traded. I just told you there's no market for Carson Wentz. Colts played it. They played the long game here. But the Bears never made an offer. There were only two teams that we heard about that were interested or could be interested in Carson Wentz. Bears never made an offer. Adam Schefter, Jay Glazer backed that up. And, uh, you know, the analogy that I've used is just because you go to an open house for a house that's on the market, that doesn't mean you're buying it. I mean, you can go through the house, that doesn't mean you're getting an offer. Were teams interested in Carson? No, curious. They were curious about Carson. It's like, what's it, what's it going to cost us? Because got to look at the salary. You know, what are we giving up? We got damaged goods here. What are we willing to give up? And the Eagles, they had, you know, they had moved past the, you know, point of no return. They couldn't keep him. They had to get rid of him. Well, the court, the Colts knew that. That's why they weren't offering anything. Nothing of substance there. But if you're giving up a third and a conditional second that could turn into a first-round draft pick, first of all, the Eagles have already made a mistake. Everything they gave up to get in the position to take Carson Wentz, then they give him the second contract, and then all of a sudden you got – Quarterback and coach who don't talk to one another. Then you got dead cap space now, $31 million. You got Jalen Hurts. And I was told, don't rule out the Eagles drafting a quarterback. The sixth pick overall. Can Carson Wentz be fixed? Yeah. 
Colts have a great offensive line. If Frank Reich can't correct, fix Carson Wentz, then nobody's going to. They are, according to Coach Frank Reich, they're lifelong friends. He's got trust there. Uh, but I think that you have to have somebody who is going to be tough on Carson Wentz. You can't let him be a diva. You have to be critical of him. That's something that the Eagles were not. But I think that the Colts, you know, they rolled the dice on this. And it could be one of those trades. And like three years from now, I'd, I'd love to revisit this and just look at everything that has happened prior to and then during the three years and see, did the Colts get a bargain here? Did the Colts get something that is going to translate into this team going to a Super Bowl? And that's how they have to look at this. But they, you know, they're investing the money, but they have a lot of cap space here. But you're getting somebody who has shown that they can play at a very high level. Uh, you know, he was going to be the MVP in 2017 before he decided to take on a couple of Rams going into the end zone. But there were no offers. There was one offer for Carson Wentz. And that's why when I was called out publicly and, you know, my point was the Eagles are, you know, saying to inside, I'm an outsider. I don't want to be an NFL insider. All I know is when I get information, I, I, I give that information to my audience. That's who I serve. Not other NFL insiders. I couldn't care less. But when I was told it, the Eagles, what was left out when I was publicly called out, the Eagles were trying to create a market because there was no market there. But who helps you? Members of the media. Hey, here in the Eagles getting a lot of, a lot of calls. People are interested. No, they weren't. That's all. I just gave you the truth. I'm not used by a team, not used by a GM or an owner. And, and if I'm, I said when it, I gave my report, if I'm wrong, I'll apologize. But if you tell me who else was calling, what other offers, I'll listen. But I wasn't wrong. And, you know, this isn't what I do for a living. I'm not graded, be, be, you know, if I break a story. I leave that to the professionals. You know, Shefty and Mort and Glazer, Albert Breer, Ian Rappaport. I let them break those stories. But when I get that information, nobody refuted the Broncos trade offer, did they? Nobody refuted that the discord that uh, was going on with the um, Russell Wilson Seahawks situation. Nobody said, oh, wait, where'd you get that information? So that's where when I bring it up to you, I tell you what I'm told. And I don't have an agenda. I don't have to, you know, hey, let's, uh, let's pump up uh, Carson Wentz and see what kind of market we have out there. I'm not, in the, I'm not in the market to do that. I don't need to have quid pro quo. If I help a team or help some person or help an agent or help a player, hey, I'll get something in return. I don't care. I've been in this business too long to understand. I've been down that road before. It's not a good road to be down. You know, there's no quid pro quo. I get information. I give it to this audience. And my track record's pretty good. 